A reading from the Gospel of John in the ninth chapter. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I don't know. They brought the one who was blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jewish, the Jewish authorities did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, who had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age. Question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. And when Jesus had heard they thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, 
If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel is chock full of insights. Too many to talk about in a short five minutes. But I'd like to pick out a few for us to ponder on today. The first thing that pops out to me is simple evangelism. As Christians, we have been given the task by God to share our faith. For many of us, the minute we start to think about evangelizing, we get that uncomfortable feeling in our bodies and say, what would I say? But if we take the lead from the blind man, it becomes quite simple. I once was blind, but now I see. For me, it was once I was hopelessly lost in addiction. I tried everything I could on my own, but once I cried out to God, I was set free. In the third chapter of Peter's first epistle from the Bible translation, The Message, he says, be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you are living the way you are and always with the utmost courtesy. If you have experienced a life-changing relationship with Christ, how could you be ready to simply share your story? The second insight that I'd like to share organically flows from this first part. Each time this man with new sight shared his experience, he grew in his understanding of who Jesus was. Our own faith deepens in us every time we share our stories with others. In 12-step work, they say, you have to give it away to keep it. I have experienced that in my ministry work as a spiritual director. Every time I meet with one of my directees to listen to how Christ is present and working in their lives and to listen to what the Holy Spirit might have me share with them, I too am filled with the deepening sense of love and grace of God in my own life. In what ways are you sharing your faith life with others that helps them and at the same time strengthens your own experience of Christ? The last thread in this gospel that struck me is that of fear, doubt, and stubbornness. The Pharisees and the Jewish officials feared Jesus. He didn't appear to be the Messiah according to their definition of a Messiah. But yet there was some doubt in the resulting confusion that divided them in their thinking as they tried to figure it all out. Some only looked at the rules, and because this healing occurred on a Sabbath, they judged that he couldn't possibly be of God because he broke the rules. But others said, yeah, but he made this man see. He has to be of God. Doesn't that sound like some of the divided conversation we hear in our society today and in our churches? Divided? because others don't do things the way we do or practice the faith in the way we do, judging by looking at the outside actions and not looking further into the intent of the heart and the evidence of faith. Here this man is shouting, wait a minute, you're not getting it. I was blind, but now I see. Do you realize that receiving sight after being blind is unheard of? And it was this Jesus that did it for me. He brings it back to the simple truth. And while the authorities fear Jesus, the parents fear the authorities for any repercussions they might face in speaking the truth. When have we not spoken the truth about our faith for fear of what someone might say or do? And in the same vein, there were also those people who refused to see. How many times have we dug our heels in the sand, retaining our rightness about something, thinking we know the truth? Father Richard Rohr calls that being addicted to our own thinking. During these last weeks of Lent, as we yearn to imitate Christ, what spiritual practices might we engage in that will make space for the Lord to dispel our fear and doubt and soften our stubborn hearts to hear the simple truth from the Spirit? As we close, I invite you to take time to ponder on any insights the Spirit may have brought to you through the proclamation of this gospel and the words of reflection. I'd like to end in prayer with the first verse of Amazing Grace. The lyrics are the simple story of John Newton's conversion that he has shared for years through this wonderful hymn. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. God's blessings to you this day.